Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, when we commenced this term of council, we discovered that the IT staff had helpfully prepared a, an assortment of resources offered to assist us in the execution of our duties. I was a little taken aback and it was because it was immediately apparent to me that some expense had been made uh, towards devices which I, I didn't want or need. Um, at, at the time and since, I remember a number of councillors saying that it was a bit of a shame that we weren't asked first what we needed because council could have saved itself some expense and bother. It turns out that those commitments of purchase and lease flowed from this policy, which I'm suggesting we begin the process of updating tonight. None of us are here because of the, the perks. As a case in point, I can't find a biscuit in the kitchen down the hall most times, but most of us here treat what we do as a civic duty and as a privilege. Certainly, we should be thinking in terms of only placing a burden on ratepayers for resources that are directly related and genuinely enable us to be better representatives. To cite my own experience as the example, I handed back the, the Windows laptop because I'm a Mac guy, all my output as a counsellor has come through me working on the device that I'm used to. I handed back the iPhone because I'd just bought myself a new iPhone and couldn't fathom the, the merit of having to carry around two. Uh, I used the SIM card, but, but largely for uh, data. Um, some of you are Android people, and the idea of being handed a, an iPhone was like being asked to decipher Martian texts. Um, I've never used the wireless modem that we were given to facilitate our internet use at home, because like most of you, I have broadband, which I'm perfectly happy to use at my own expense uh, for council business. And in most cases, many councillors will attest that they live in an area where the reception is so poor they couldn't have used a cellular modem anyway. So right there, there's thousands of dollars in unneeded expenditure. And further, the current policy has a number of anachronisms. It still refers to the installation of phone lines and even fax machines to councillors' dwellings. It offers councillors the ability to get a tape of the audio of a council meeting, which vastly predates the advent of web streaming and podcasting of our meetings. I even pay for my own license for Microsoft Office, which I need to access my council email because council's licensing does not extend to Macs. Now, council have indicated in their note here that the policy can be rejigged in the first year of a council term, but we arrived here in September 2016 with those decisions already made. Equipment either purchased or leases entered into. I think one legacy we can leave the new chamber in September is a better policy, one not one that's updated after the horse has bolted. Now, the elements that I've placed into point two of my notice of motion are not proscriptive. They are simply there to illustrate the kind of things that could be looked at in a draft policy that will come back to us for exhibition. My hope is that with a more flexible policy, uh, councillors on the next council may well choose to forego some of the resources that were given to us without us asking for them and, and that that will save council money. I'll conclude with just a word about why I'm bringing this now and in this form. I floated this with a request to staff back in July of last year. As with many such requests, I received affirmations that my points had merit and that the policy was due for review per councillor, then Mayor Calvert's mayoral minute in September of 2018 that uh, sought to review all of our council policies. Nothing happened. If this had been recognised as one of those policy updates best completed in time for the new term, this notice of motion would not have been necessary. I'm grateful for the support and feedback that many councillors have already given for the sentiment behind this notice of motion, and I commend it to you. 